Gin was a dirty and dusty place, filled with danger. Cotton lint filled the air and choked the lungs of workers. Many succumbed to a life-ending condition that came to be known as brown lung disease. Despite these dangers, each season the lines at Texas gins got longer and longer as the cotton boom continued. At Mejia, a small village in central Texas, a young man named Robert Sylvester Munger had left school to help meet the demand at his father's cotton gin. Constantly sneezing with itching eyes and sore throat, he imagined a machine that would be a safer, faster, and cleaner version of the machine created by Eli Whitney. The ginning process had once again become complex and labor-intensive. Crews of men were required for each of several steps, from loading the raw cotton into cleaners, to feeding it into the gins, transferring the clean cotton to balers, running compresses, and transferring cottonseed to storage. Munger's genius was to see this process as a whole. See, they had a, what you call like a vacuum. That's how they unloaded that cotton. It would suck it back up through a big tube and it would, you could see the cotton going, you know, through the pipes. They'd hold it about two or three feet high and it would just suck that cotton right on up through that pipe. I guess it's about three feet, you know, wide or whatever it was. And they, the guy would have the handles and it would just suck that cotton right out of the trailer, right up through that. And you could see it going. And my grandpa always said, boy, every time you see it going like that, he said, that's them dollar bills going, boy. <laughs> Munger used fans to operate his new system, Jim. A moving pipe would vacuum the incoming cotton from a trailer and move it through the entire process. While steam gins had required enormous crews to produce up to 10 bales a day, Munger's gin could be operated by as few as five people and produced nearly four times as many bales per day. Munger's gin revolutionized the industry, but it was expensive. Capital was required to construct these gins. Investors collaborated, our communities formed cooperatives to finance ginning operations. The Munger's consolidated ginning process created industrial scale operations. It changed the skylines of communities. Smokestacks, water towers, large galvanized metal buildings became their signature. The constant 24 hour a day chug of large internal combustion engines now signaled the ginning season was underway. After 1900 in Lavernia, two merchants with experience ginning cotton recognized the potential of the longer process. W.R. Wiseman and Hugo Cott pooled their resources and began opening gins throughout the area. They were opening gins just as a new catastrophe fell upon cotton farmers. It was a gin here, but it was owned by the Wiseman family. And uh, uh, the farmers had to take whatever they Wiseman was given for the cotton. So they felt like they weren't getting what they are supposed to for the cotton. So he formed a farmer's co-op and uh, built it right across the street from where the Wyman gin was and put the Wyman's out of business. And, uh, and the cotton gin was very successful until the bow weaver came along and ruined the cotton crops and uh, couldn't farm cotton anymore. Well, the boll weevil attacks the bowl of the cotton before the cotton bursts open and, and the lint it comes out. The boll weevil drills, so to speak, into that bowl and causes the bowl to be defective. And therefore, the bowl does not develop and the cotton does not open up. And so there is no cotton to be picked. At first, it arrived as a rumor. Something was killing cotton crops in Mexico. An entire region's cotton crops would be wiped out. With each year the devastation drew nearer. In 1892, it crossed the Rio Grande. Farmers did not believe that the threat could reach them in central Texas. Then in 1894, several fields of cotton failed to produce in nearby Floresville. The boll weevil traveled relentlessly from field to field, season to season, destroying cotton production, something that even the Civil War had not been able to accomplish. By 1900, 
the effect of the boll weevil were seen in Lavernia. The boll weevil had devastated the cotton production here in this area. It simply didn't continue to exist. 